coming to you live from the Bonfire Studios North. It's another episode of Toro's Weekly. Headphones I, work better when you have them on. People. Yeah, that usually does. <laughs> You've been the host the last couple of times, Ken, so I'm taking back over now. I'm your host, Peter Theodos. Joining me, as always, is my co-host, Ken Oda, and we already, can have a bunch of people checking in. The O'Connell family, Randy Stahl, and the Ness crew all checking in, so glad you guys could all tune in tonight for this episode of Toro's Weekly. Without further ado, we will bring in our first guest of the evening. Fans, please welcome Miss Sarah Schlecht. Sarah, welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you. Well, we'll uh, we'll knock the big one out of the park right away instead of uh, holding. I imagine it's mostly the players who are watching in suspense. But yes. uh, for fans who don't know, one of the major things the Booster Club does for our players is a couple of college scholarships. And Sarah, I'll let you take it away. All right. Well, we did make a decision on our scholarship. Um, we asked for three things in our scholarship applications, community service, off-ice leadership, and what it means to be part of the minor community. This year comes up, but I suppose everybody wants to know who won. What do you think? I know. I'm excited to find out who won. <laughs> <laughs> so our two winners this year, our first one was Willie Eminen. And our second winner was Kevin Ness. Congratulations. Congratulations to those two boys. Yes, indeed. A couple of outgoing guys. Uh, I know Vili has the the spot lined up at Union, and I, I'm not sure if Nesser has finalized his college plans yet. I know there were a couple of schools who were looking. And actually, Sarah, I'm going to have you repeat it one more time. I guess we uh, our internet bumped there for a second, so we can get those winners from you one more time. The winners are Willie Eminem and Kevin Ness. So an, an awesome thing for both of them, $2,000 towards – towards their education is, is huge. Um, even, even for the guys who are on, you know, partial scholarships at D one schools, that $2,000 goes a long way. I know, um, just having, you know, gone through college myself, not that long ago and you just graduated, yeah, I just graduated, just so. graduating last spring. Um, you know, every, every little bit helps and $2,000 certainly isn't a little bit. That's, that's quite a bit. No, that will definitely cover a lot of stuff. Um, and fans chiming in as well, congratulating both Vili and Kevin as Amanda Bauer and Mike Van Hove and now Shelly Carbo. And a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people. So. We can't even keep up with them all. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so congrats again to the winners. But since, since we've got you on board, you're also a Minot public school teacher. Um, yes, I am. Talk about, um, you know, as a teacher, what seeing these guys come and use hockey um, to advance their education means uh, to you as, as a fan and a teacher? Just that, that, you know, reading all of these applications, that's their main goal is is to get to a college and, and continue on. And that would be any teacher's dream is that that is someone's goal is to continue their education. Um, also... The schools, this has to be probably the weirdest year for you as a teacher with the way I, it's weird for everyone, weird for us that hockey season just kind of ended, but um, you have a much more serious job and it's also affected. How has, how has the, the COVID uh, shutdown here help or hurt, uh, hurt what you do, or at least changed what you do? Oh, it's changed it completely. Um, you know, teachers, thrive on reading the room when they're teaching and right now we can't do that we do have hold some live sessions and meet online and we can kind of see kids but no families on the same schedule anymore with parents who are working who aren't working older and younger siblings who also need technology so those meetings are mostly for fun or extra support so when you're teaching you're just hoping you're teaching the right way you know, aside from just mastering the material, I think another huge role teachers play is being that support system for their students and not being able to do that. You know, has that been difficult for you not having that contact with your students? And do you worry that some of your students who maybe aren't in the greatest home situations are now at risk because of this? You know, we have to trust our families. And yeah, that's 
huge not knowing we we message our students almost daily we have those live meetings just to have that face-to-face -face connection many schools around the area and around the country are doing parades where the teachers drive around through their school's neighborhoods um we're the, we've seen some reverse parades where the um teachers are around the schools and the kids come to you and but it's hard it's hard not being able to be there you know a lot of companies and a lot of colleges are now using um the zoom video chatting um is that something you guys do or are you guys using apple products or any other um streaming video chatting service like that we're using mostly google um or I am. I know there's other schools using Zoom, but um, we're using mostly Google so we can have some face to face and live conversations with our kids. What is like the talk among other teachers? Are you guys kind of pulling ideas together or are you kind of just going with your own ideas? Um, teaching is all about working together. No one can do it on their own. So, yeah. I was told when I was going through school that teaching is a lot of beg, borrow, and steal, and even more so now. Uh, have there been discussions between you and other teachers about how, I mean, I, I only have, right now I'm only dealing with a first grader, but <laughs> yeah, I, so the material is not over my head yet, but I imagine once you get to some of those older grades, you're going to run into students whose families can't help them keep up and even first, I know I'm not doing nearly as good of a job as a first grade teacher would be doing. So have there been discussions about how you'll help students catch up in the fall when we do get back to school? You know, we haven't had any formal conversations about it, but just from talking to other teachers, it's in the back of our minds. We know that this is going to cause that gap to widen a little bit. Um, kids that are going to be successful are going to be successful wherever they are, whatever setting they're in. Um, and other kids just, they need that extra help. And some families just aren't able to do it, whether it's the material is too hard or just life situations right now. It's just, they're not capable. So I think it will widen the gap. And I know in my mind that next fall is going to be critical in catching up students in those areas they missed. You know, kind of follow up that question. Um, what has your message been to parents um, about this whole thing? Because uh, you know it's in their minds too that their child's going to be falling a little bit behind. Um, so what have you been telling the parents to kind of ease them a little bit? <laughs> More than anything, I say, just breathe. <laughs> <laughs> um it's because I've had to tell myself that I, I'm not a very high anxiety person and, and I felt my anxiety going up more now than I ever have before. And sometimes I just have to tell myself, stop, breathe. We got this. Well, teachers will do whatever they need to in the fall, in the coming years. I think we're going to feel the impact of this for more than just next year. Um, before we let you go, we should get back to the booster club a little bit. Um, yeah. you've been involved in the booster club since it started. Um, what, what do you like about being a booster club member and, and why has that driven you to now be on the booster club board? Um, well, I, I'm just a, a huge hockey fan and I really enjoyed getting to know the people in the organization from the players through the coaching staff to the back office staff. Um, and it's, it's just, it's a family. And I just, I guess anymore, I just can't imagine not being a part of that. All right. Well, for fans who want to join the booster club, there is a link on the front page of the website. Um, also the booster club has its own Facebook page. So, uh, I imagine there will be a membership drive. I, we usually have, usually there's that summer barbecue. Who knows if that'll be something that can happen <laughs> as far as a membership drive goes. But uh, definitely uh, we'd love to see the Booster Club grow so that maybe there isn't as much uh, work on the on the shoulders of our wonderful board members. 
Yeah, and before we let you go real quick, uh, Christy Koopman chiming in saying, great job, Sarah. So from all of us, <laughs> like I know all your students um, from Ken and I, my mom was a teacher, so I have nothing but respect for teachers. Thank you for everything that you do. Um, it's really appreciated, and uh, we thank you for coming on Torres Weekly. All right. Well, thanks for having me, and congratulations, boys, and keep those applications coming. All righty. Thank you, thanks, Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> thanks. So that, uh, that again, was Sarah Select with the Minotauros Booster Club. Um, the scholarship winners are Eminem and Ness. They'll each get $2,000, I'm sure. Well, as the Booster Club will be in touch with you guys on how to get that uh, – get that paid out to your schools so huge congratulations to them um while we wait for our next guest Cole O'Connell I want to take a minute to remind fans you have one day left for the first of the Toros stay at home challenges we'll have um prizes announced tomorrow but uh jump on to our YouTube, our Facebook, or just search the hashtag Toro Stay Home Challenge. Braden Bartu's challenge is already up. We've already got several submissions. Had a bunch come in today, Peter. Yeah, we did, and that was great to see a lot of uh, fans trying out different things and uh, trying and, to see if they have any hidden talents. Too. Yeah, and you know, and I like what I like about it is the ability to win is not tied to your ability to complete the challenge. No. Nope. So feel free to try. I think uh, I'm going to pick on him a little bit because he's a friend. Benjamin Lingenfeld <laughs> cheated a little bit, used a goalie stick, and still still didn't get very far. But by all means, try it. Everyone who enters is entered to win regardless of how well they do with the challenge. But uh, joining us now is the outgoing Toros captain, the ninth captain in Toros history, Cole O'Connell. Cole, welcome hey, to the show. Going? Yeah. So first off, um, let's talk a little bit about the uh, virtual Robbie Cup that unfortunately the Toros or the Warthogs, the Warthogs as it's yes. named, just got eliminated from. Uh, how much amongst the team was that um, a conversation of? Um, everyone was pretty excited to see it, and I know a lot of us watched it, at least the first game. Uh, we were talking probably throughout the whole game and just uh, chirping guys and giving guys congrats for scoring and stuff like that. Now, how you know, as a guy who I know grew up grew up playing the NHL game series, how cool was it to see your team and a digital representation of you out on the ice? It was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it's just different. Yeah, it's just weird seeing their whole team out there and all guys created. Uh, yeah, they kind of played the same way as we did, uh, but the lines were switched up a little bit, which is weird, but it was fun. How do you think they rated everyone? How was everyone's ratings? Like, do you think it was pretty accurate? I didn't accurate? see the ratings or anything, but um, I don't know. I think uh, you should have been a I 99. Think it was pretty close. Yeah, I think I should have been better, but <laughs> it is what it is. How did it feel when uh, the digital you scored that goal? Did you, did you get a little part out of that? Or? Yeah, yeah. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, my line played pretty well. I think we had three goals in that game so it's pretty fun to watch you know unfortunately with this whole uh COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh your time as a Toro was cut ultimately short um so let's just talk about that for a little bit what was the um the first thought that went through your mind when you found out that the season had been canceled um it, it was pretty crazy uh, it didn't seem real uh it was kind of sucks like I was looking forward to uh, having a playoff and being able to finish my Toro career in the right way and having a, at least a say on how it's going to end or yeah. So it was, it was pretty unfortunate for Dan like that. Uh, have you talked to any of the other 20 year olds uh, about what just how it feels to have your, your careers cut short like that? Is that something you guys have yeah, discussed and- or just have you been dealing with it kind of on your own? Um, I would say not really lately, but right away. I know me and Kevin Ness were talking about it quite a bit, just how weird it is and how unfortunate it is. Like, uh, I mean, in playoffs, that's a lot of times where a lot of guys get scouted quite a bit and see like we lost out on a opportunity. So, um, aside from the unfortunate ending to your career here, you were a long time Toro, uh, two and a half year guy uh, joining after your senior year of high school. So, you know, what were some of your favorite memories of being in Minot? Um, my favorite memory would have to be sweeping Bismarck last year, first round of playoffs. 
what is there a specific moment that stands out um i would say honestly the best part of that was the first game when we uh, got roberts pulled <laughs> all right i know that the mason the mason part. was rocking that night um oh yeah so aside from on the ice what are some things that you'll miss about uh the magic city um i'll miss the golf course um <laughs> I'll miss a lot miss of the playing guys. golf or working the golf outing playing golf <laughs> and then um, I'll miss a lot of the guys met a ton of new guys from there so that's gonna be weird not being with them all season um, I'd say the fans it was unreal playing in that in the Mesa arena every night it was one of the best rinks I've played in um, and just like the whole coaching staff and the organi- organization was really awesome you know, um, this will be on our Facebook page pretty much permanently. Um, so if a future player looks at this video and he sees you talking mm-hmm. about uh, playing here, what's one thing that you would tell them about Minot, both as a city and the community of Minot, as well as the team, the organization, and just the fans in general? I'd say it's a fantastic place to play. I mean, you got top-of-the-line facilities with the rink. You get treated well with everything getting – all meals on the road, you get nice uh, apparel, you get cheap sticks, you get everything. I mean, it's a top-notch program. And then the fans, I think we have some of the better fans in the whole league, and there's always a lot of them at each game, so it's always exciting to play at home. A couple answers ago, you mentioned the coaching staff. What What's an impact – or? What's something that you'll take with you, an impact that maybe Marty or, or Wags or Waz um, had on you as as a player, both on and off the ice? Um, well, I'd say with Coach Marty, he taught me a lot. Um, I learned a lot of just better ways to think the game, different plays to make. Um, he just taught me a lot. Uh, I'd say Wags he just taught me to be a little bit more physical and play tough. And then uh, Waz, he was just always there for good motivation and pumping you up and always making you feel better. What was, uh, you know, since this is kind of um, cut short of everything, what have you been up to lately? Just hanging out at home or you still training and all that? Um, I recently started uh, working for my dad, so I am a sprinkler fitter. Ken, you know a few things about working for your I dad. I do. I worked for my dad from the time I was 15 until basically I moved to Minot. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's, uh, it has this, but do you at least get free lunch? That was one of the things I miss about working for my dad was free lunch every day. Well, I get to make my lunch in the morning and that's about <laughs> it. <laughs> what else have you been up to besides, uh, besides working anything, uh, anything fun? Uh, not really. I mean, I still got to finish my uh, online classes, so that takes up quite a bit of my nights. Um, other than that, it's been video games, homework, and just working. You mentioned uh, online classes, getting ready for next year. Um, what uh, have you have you settled on plans yet for for next season? Yet, Are you still uh, talking to schools, make a decision, or or where are you at there? Yeah, I've uh, I've decided to play at Concordia in um, Moorhead. So my hometown. Congratulations, bud. That's yeah, thank a, you. That's a big announcement. Uh, what uh, yeah. what drew you to Concordia, aside from it being in your hometown, which I imagine is nice? Uh, yeah, so it's my hometown. Um, the coaching staff is awesome. I know I played with the head coach's son all through high school and a little in youth. And my other assistant coach, he, is, he was my peewee coach. And the other one is Brian Lee, who he played in the NHL for a little bit. So, I mean, great coaching staff. Um, the school is high end. Um, and then I know a lot of my good friends from past teams or stuff like that. They're all going to be going there, and I'm going to be living with a few good buddies of mine. So, it'll be fun. So, you're moving out of the house even though you're still going to school at home. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be moving out in a few weeks. Any idea of what you're going to be studying there? yeah finance interesting what are you uh wanting to do with that just kind of just go into a financial advisor there you go there you go now uh since you're still only going to be a few hours down the road you've got no excuse you're gonna have to pop in for uh a game or two next season i might have to yeah or maybe come to the cities at the start of the year 
or uh, I imagine you're only a couple hours from St. Cloud as well. So we better see a lot of you next yep. season. Well, you probably will see me. <laughs> well, Cole, it was a pleasure getting to know you, and I look forward to uh, our conversations in the future, whether it's at a, a Toros game, text message, or who knows, maybe we might have you back on Toros Weekly sometime soon. All right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for everything. All righty. Thank you, Cole. Thanks, Cole. Yep, see you later. That was, uh, again, the Ooh. outgoing, the ninth captain in Toros history, Cole O'Connell. Uh, glad to have him aboard. I'm glad to get uh, break some news there. Yeah. Some, uh, a D3 commitment for, for OC. So he uh, continues to add to the numbers. And I, I'll have to look. I think we're getting pretty darn close to 100 college commits between the D, D1 and D3 levels. I'm pretty sure. I remember you mentioned that we were at like 97, 98, somewhere in that. And I think we've had two. So that he might be our 100. Yeah, he might uh, He might very well be number 100. I uh, yeah. I should have looked at that this afternoon, knowing that we were going to talk to him. But <laughs> whoops. Oh, oh, well, we'll probably have off to, season for everybody. Yeah, it is. We'll put it out on social media. You're, you'll probably go yeah. back and look because now you're curious about <laughs> I it. I am. It's, I, and, you know, when we were doing those Toros, the online, uh, the virtual playoffs, I had my laptop right here. I should have brought it back for the show to do uh, some quick research, but it is what it is. It is what it is. And, uh, yeah. So the new dash auctions went up this week. Um, you can find those on the Dash app or find the link on our website. Yes, and it's uh, it's a mystery bag week. I love the mystery bag I auctions. Do it's uh, we've done a few in the past. Um, we we guarantee that there's at least a hundred dollars worth of merchandise in each bag, and one of those bags will have a surprise grand a, prize. Yeah. But only one of the bags has it, so you gotta decide which maybe one you're gonna one, bid and on. Maybe two. So yeah, I. Uh, I think uh, check out the mystery bags as well as the other items up on up on Dash. I believe it's Westie's jersey, uh, Bjorgi's gloves. And I forget which three pucks, but uh, the Toro Signature Summer rolls on Dash app, D-A-S-H-A-P-P dot I-O. Yeah, so that will wrap it up for another episode of Toro's Weekly. As always, that's Ken Oda. I'm Peter Theodos. We'll see you in two weeks, as I guess it really isn't Torres Weekly. It's no. Torres Bi-Weekly yes. now, and we'll or have, Semi-Weekly, uh, whatever you want to call it. I haven't talked to them yet, but I don't. they're not players. So they don't really get to say no to us. We'll have Marty Murray and Chris Lonke, the Toros head coach and assistant general managers, on board to get you ready for the supplemental draft. Which will be definitely some interesting conversations to have. Two weeks, it'll be two weeks from today, and then the Tuesday after that is the supplemental draft, a three round draft, um, which really will go a long way. We only have five 20 year olds to replace, so that will be a, a huge uh, afternoon for the, for the Toros. Real quick, NFL ops. draft tomorrow. Who's your number one pick? I have no idea. I'm a Bears fan. I don't have to worry about the first round. <laughs> Ken Oda, I'm Peter Theodos. Thanks once again to Mr. Sean Bachoven for running the cameras behind the scenes and to the rest of the Bonfire Studios North studio operators, which I guess is really only Sean. But anyways, that's Ken. I'm Peter. We'll see you in two weeks.